It is Friday, June 18, 2010, and welcome to This Week in Linux News. As a follow-up to last week's story on the Flash vulnerabilities, Adobe actually finalized version 10.1 for Linux, Mac, and Windows. It's been in the works for a long time. 10.1 is extremely stable, so it was perfect timing to do it. At the same time, though, they decided they were going to go ahead and kill off 64-bit Flash for the time being. Of course, there's a lot of mixed opinions on this. A lot of people are going to miss 64-bit Flash, but people who watch Hulu are not going to miss it. People who don't like Flash are definitely not going to miss it. Moving right along, let's talk about some Ubuntu news. Late last week, Jono Bacon, the community manager for Ubuntu, wrote an article for TechRadar saying that Ubuntu is actually not a democracy, just like Mark Shuttleworth said, it's a meritocracy. What does that mean? That means the longer that you're in the community, the more that you contribute to the project, the more say that you're going to have in where the project goes from here. Makes a lot of sense if you really think about it. There was initially a lot of controversy when Shuttleworth said that Ubuntu was not a democracy, but this article really clears it up very nicely. Basically, the point that was made is that a brand new user should not be making the same sort of decisions as a user who's been putting in their effort for the last four or five years. Makes a lot of sense to me, but what do you guys think about it? We've talked about this before. In Ubuntu 10.10, they're adding a Unity panel. The problem that I see with this and with a lot of the new things that are coming with newer versions of GNOME is they're not allowing any sort of customizations to it. What this means is you're not going to be able to add or edit any of the applets on it, and you're not going to be able to move anything around. That said, this could be changed before 10.10 finally releases. Moving right along, Dell has created a page of their top 10 things that they think you should know about Ubuntu. Basically, this list gives Windows users a general idea of what you can do with Ubuntu coming from a Windows environment. Including such items as, Ubuntu is simple and elegant, Ubuntu is designed for the internet, Ubuntu plays video songs and movies easily, Ubuntu is safer than Windows, it boots up fast, it has thousands of free programs, as well as giving comparisons of things that you can do between Windows and Ubuntu. Just a little bit of an update, I was editing this video and someone in my chat room mentioned Dell has changed their page from saying Ubuntu is safer than Microsoft Windows, it now says Ubuntu is secure. I have a feeling that Microsoft contacted them and had a little bit to do with that. Just thought I'd mention that moving right along. Now I've talked about this a little bit before, Jolly Cloud is a version of Ubuntu Netbook Remix specifically designed with the cloud in mind. The Jolly Cloud team has actually put together a video though showing that their 1.0 version is going to have touchscreen support. I will of course have a link to that in the doobly-doo if you want to check it out. At this point they have a pretty decent list of supported touchscreens and I look forward to seeing where they go with that. Moving on to some Google news, hot on the heels of Google I.O.'s announcement of Google TV, Logitech has announced their first Google TV based set-top box. They're calling the device Review, which is a throwback to the term Review from the 1910s through the 1930s. The details on it are still pretty slim at this point, but it does show that Google TV is well on its way. And finally, in almost a direct response to my questions about video editing in the cloud, YouTube has created their own YouTube video editor. It is, of course, available at youtube.com slash editor. It allows you to take video clips from your own account, cut off the beginnings and ends if you want to, splice them all together. You can even audio swap with some available libraries they provide, and publish the video when you're all finished. It's not a terribly feature-rich project at this point, but it definitely shows the future of cloud-based video editing. But that's all I've got for you today. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.